greatest number of people. That is what a constitution must be. And having set the objective of the constitution, you then frame a constitution to achieve that objective. Because we really do have a race problem. Those divisions are real. We see it in our politics. We see it in our trade union. We see that they take the divisions with them. Look at where people live in this U.S. You have enclaves in in the Bronx and and in Richmond Hill and in and in, and in Brooklyn. They're taking the division with them. Women are dying in the streets, and we have a government pontificator running around campaigning for women's vote. No women should vote in this election coming up unless there is something done to the legislation as Magistrate Kim is advocating. That voices like ours that are not in the political trench fighting it out, voices like ours should um, become stronger. One of the things about the Caribbean is that we have never had one discourse Bass will know the days of the new world and the old world and the radical left and, 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 and so on. What we had was this concourse of ideas, which I think in the early days of independence pushed up, pushed us in, in a certain direction. We've got to move back to that point of having these multiple discourses. Good evening, everyone. My name is Tracy Can, and this evening you're tuned in to Globespan 24-7 for another program where we deal with social issues. And today has been observed as International Men's Day, and our program is focused on the role of men in today's society. Joining me on the platform uh, from Burbies and Georgetown, I have two very distinguished guests. I've got Apostle Kevin Ferreira of the Changing of Life Ministries Church on the Quarantine in Burbies. And I have Mr. Andre Gonzalez, the Deputy Director of Juvenile Justice at the Ministry of Public Security. Gentlemen, happy International Men's Day. Thank you, thank you Tracy. Thank you, Tracy. You're most welcome. Uh, thank you so much for joining me this evening um, as we discuss this issue. First, I'd like for us to sort of build a foundation. Um, why, what is, what is the role of a man in society? And um, Pasi, you can perhaps start. And then uh, Mr. Gonzalez, um, in, in your opinion, what is the role of a man? Well, um, from a biblical perspective, uh, a man, God gave him that responsibility to, to be in charge um to take control to watch over his family um etc um his his his, his role a uh, man especially a husband um is to take care of his wife take care of his kids um that that is his main responsibility and we see unfortunately um a lot of people um are moving away from that but I believe it's our God-given responsibility to be the head and to lead, take the lead and to lead in every area uh, as it pertains to life, you know, to be a leader. I think, I think that's the main role of a man to be a leader, you know, a quality leader as well. Uh, Mr. Gonzalez? Yeah, I, I, I tend to agree with the pastor, but um, I think that role has um, has encompassed several other dimensions, um, given the fact that uh, women has, so to speak, um, uh, stepped up to the plate. Women has led in so many different areas. Uh, for instance, I was raised by, by in part, a single parent. And um, that woman, my mother, uh, stood the role as the man and the woman you know, and, and she did it well. So the role of the man in the context of the Guyanese society is no longer viewed from a biblical um, perspective, but more from, from a, an eclectic approach. Mm -hmm. You know, the role of the man has changed and it is, it is something we have to accept. We are in the, in the, in the era of the woman 
<laughs> you know, I'm not taken away from the man saying, you know, um, based on the biblical perspective, you are no longer relevant. You are relevant, but your role is now more of a shared role. Uh-huh. That that's my my um, opinion about that. Um, thank you. Two varying opinions. Um, you know, something that we need now that we've established, um, in your opinion, uh, what you know, the role of a man is. Uh, do you think that men are taking on that role in society? And of course, in the context of the Guyanese society, and I, I, before you, you know, you, you gentlemen add to that, I'd just like to say to our online viewers, feel free to share your comments, your thoughts on the topic. Um, but Mr. Gonzalez, do you think that men are taking on their role in society and in every aspect of society that is in the home, um, in the workplace, in their communities, do you think they're taking on their their role? That that is a a question that um we'll have to take in parts because with opportunity there is a um a, a, a certain percentage of men who are taking on that role. Then you have on the other arm, the other side, lack of opportunity, and some men seems to neglect that role. So it's a it's a tricky, it's a very tricky perspective. Some some people would say, well, just because your gender is male, therefore you should always be in a position to lead. But what if that person wasn't inculcated in, in such a way to lead? What if that woman was 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 um was groomed and, and, and educated and given the opportunities to lead? Um, some men in Guyana society again take that may may view that as being um and be offended by it, you know. But um you you you're actually speaking to a, a democratic type of man, you know, and and, and human rights is is my is 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 one of my um my my penchant. So any household, for me, there's always going, supposed to be equality, and no role is greater than the next, you know. So when I hear of a, a man who 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 um murders his girlfriend or his wife just because of, of, of disagreements. You know, I, I don't see that expressing a, a, a role where um, the man is dominant, the man is, is um, he, 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 he's the North Star. He, you know, I see that as the man, the man has lose, he's losing focus, he's losing direction. And um, past, I must say, the religious community really needs to step in here and offer some guidance to, to, to some of these, these these guys. I mean, Guyana has one of the highest, the highest rate of domestic violence and murder. You know, so please share with me what, what are some of your views? Um, Pastor, it's the same question. Um, do you think that men are taking on their role in society as they ought to? Well, it's a yes and no um, uh, answer, really. But I mean, we take this opportunity on this program to to help 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 men who uh, may be falling short of their responsibility. You know, seeing that all those who are watching, because I, I agree with my, my friend that not all men are taking up their responsibility. Some of them shy away from their responsibility, and that's why we're finding more uh, female. Uh, are in a working place now, they're educating themselves, uh, developing themselves, which is a good thing, right? Because, I mean, it's good to see female um, developing themselves. But I, I think what I would like to see is more men being involved in society, um, being being involved in things that are has value, um, helping society. Um, one of the thing, key word here is choices. Um, uh, it's, it depends on the choices that men make, you know. Um, if you if you want to live a life that whereby, you know, you're going to be angry all the time, you're going to be violent against women, that's not the road to go down because it's going to take you to prison eventually. So you got to make a choice every day 
that you know what you, you're going to be a good man you know um the bible talks about being a good man you know and what we need to see in the world a more man making choices to be good um to the fellow human being in general not just in their home but in society you know be good to the poor um be good to the youths in the society, help develop the youths in the society. We don't find that there's much uh, clubs and, and and these kind of things in this generation because everybody's hooked up to the internet. But we, we need to see more activities in the community where people are coming together and men have, being role models, educating the young people um, about life, about the future, you know, that, that's what we need to see. Um, I just want to respond to the question I'm about to ask about men being so violent in our country. Um, it, yes, again, it goes back to uh, these men making poor choices, my brother. Um, you know, uh, you know, the, the, the Bible said you live by the sword, you'll die by the sword. You know, if you if you keep if you keep living on alcohol and drugs, is going to take you down the wrong road, you know. So the choices that men make are very, very important, you know. And um, unfortunately, some men in our country are making some very poor choices. But uh, uh, my prayer is, and I guess all the churches are praying for our men to make good choices so that it will benefit the home, the society, and the country. Indeed, um, it's it's safe to say because the question that you know I just asked, if if you gentlemen think men are taking on their responsibility the way they should, it's safe to say men are struggling to. Some men are struggling well, to. Like you said, it's a it's a yes, it's a yes and no. You know, there are still some good men out there, Dr. Tracy. Don't not that all oh, men. <laughs> generalizing you know but you know we have a large amount of men who are struggling to take on their responsibility men um and they have children with women and the women are left to to um to bring the children up the women are left to work to, to take care of the children so why do you think men are having such a hard time taking on their responsibility why are they struggling so much so, so we're speaking about men taking on responsibility in the family setting. Yeah. In this, not, yes, specifically in the in the family setting here now, because right. there are a lot of boys and and girls who are growing up without fathers, and then it becomes this cycle, this chain where that's how they were brought up. They never saw a father, and so they go now and they have children, and they're not there for their children. So this is in the context of family. Um, why are men having such a hard time? Yeah. Um, taking on the responsibility in the family setting has it, it, there is many different factors at play. Um, we have situations in Guyana where the man taking on that responsibility, the economic part of it, may may warrant that he leave the community, leave the home to provide for the family. Whilst he's away from the home, other factors influence the, the, um, his family, right? Um, sometimes where he go to, to eke out employment or, or so on might be in the interior, um, mm -hmm. in the dredging community, for instance. And let's face it, you're not going to find many, I'm not saying there aren't any, but you're not going to find um, right angle characters um wholesome family men with the true and christian and more you know good moral constitution and so on there so you're going to find you're going to run into all kinds of individuals and some of them may be more impressionable on on the man depending on his age a, a man starts in in guyana from 18 years old you know so depending on his age he starts to now develop an idea or a concept of what to do, what to expect, how to act, you know? And I ha I've been in the interior, I've been into some of these mining areas, and I, I listen to these guys. Now, these are the guys that's coming back home, either Georgetown, perhaps Barbies, and um, you can imagine what examples they're going to set. I mean, today I was at a school um, giving a, a small a small presentation with a good friend of mine, and um, on 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 uh, in, in the celebration of, of of the Men's Day, 
And one of the one of the um, the gentlemen there, the presentation says the the, the man is rolling up a, a spliff, and then he's telling his son, "Youth man, this is how you do the thing right." So now, with uh -huh. with that sort of with that sort of yeah. of um, uh, trans. The, the the youth, the, the the his son is seeing this as a normal sort of behavior. Him. Therefore, you know, we also have situations where the man is in a family. It seems to be good. It appears to be he appears to be a, a good Christian man or or whatever religion he is. But the woman in this family in this household is living with her worst enemy so mm. it depends on how we have to which angle we approaching this thing so why is we have a man who may change or lose his uh, moral groundings based on economic situations you have another man who has everything but he loses something based on on some other factors and um so we need all the help we can get in guyana at this moment. The society, um, every day I see it, I hear it from men. I look at the minibus um, drivers and, and, and conductors. I know that these men are fathers and the way they behave towards children, students, you know, it baffles me. It, 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 it really, it, 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 a minibus conducted today smack a 13 year old girl because she wouldn't go into his bus, right? So these are the, now, how, how, how can we, how can we address these things? I, I mean, we have to at some point, we need to, because we are losing our, our boys. I, I think I said a mouthful. <laughs> um, Pastor, why do you think um, so many men are struggling to take on their role in the home? Well, well, Tracy, um, in, as a pastor, you know, I've got to have to bring in the God factor into it, right? Um, uh, the Bible says that, you know, a husband should love his wife as Christ loved the church. And that is deep right there. Um, our response as a husband, I should love my wife the way Christ loved the church. And we know how Christ loved the church. He, he, he gave himself for the church. He died for the church. And, and that was instructed in the Bible. That's the way how we should love our wife, you know. And um, I think it, it, it comes down to where we need more godly men in our nation. You know, we need the Bible says righteousness exalts a nation. And if we're going to have a righteous nation, it got to start with the head. Because like what my friend is saying is that there is no role models. There is no no one is setting a good example. You know, and that that is that is irritating. I mean, like what he said, the girl, uh, the guy hit the girl. You know, that that's that's terrible, bro. You know, and um, you know that's not good for society. You know, that's disrespectful towards women. And it comes back that man, we need godly men in our nation. We need godly men with godly values. And you know, uh, and there's a very profound statement where Joshua made. He said, "As for me and my house." This is what we're going to do. We're going to serve the Lord. You know, if you live in this house, we, me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. And I believe, you know, we, we need godly men. We need men who stand up for righteousness, who uh, is going to watch over their children, uh, make sure to do the right thing. Sometimes they may not like it, but, you know, you know what is best for them and um, lead them down the right road. You know, Sunday morning, um, going to church with your wife and your kids. It's a value that is so special, taking them to the house of the Lord for worship, for praise. You know, that is so special. That is that is a tremendous value. And the greatest gift, I believe, you or the baton that you could pass on to your children is, is to leave them with Christ, because the Bible said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. So, when you you lead as a father as a man you lead your kids down that road it's a value that is priceless really you know you can't put money to that you know um it's priceless and and i thank god for the 
for the godly man if you're watching and you're a godly man and you're taking your family out to the house of the lord and you're you're standing up for holiness and righteousness man uh compliments to you and um you know we need to see more of that and if, if you're not standing up for godliness tracy you're going to struggle because the devil is real the enemy is real and you know he he's going to play with the mind and the mind is the, the control tower the battlefield and uh, we see that the devil is plaguing a lot of man mind to do evil things in our generation and that's how it is and the answer to that is jesus um Tracy, if if I may, I, I, I add it to the past. I, I I think I think um we do need more strong um road models. Um we need this big brother and and um I'm not going to ex exclude women and big sister um, organizations in Guyana. We can't we can't look at the religious community alone to help us solve this problem. Um. The boys generally, or men generally, once they, they, okay, I tell you, I told a friend one time that the weapon of mass destruction is a black man without a job. Sorry to say that. <laughs> An afro Guyanese without a job. That's a weapon of mass destruction. But oh, listen, shit. once we create employment or create an environment where certain entrepreneurial opportunities can happen. I think we're going to see a turnaround. That's a good Boys point. generally feel, a man generally feels um, wanted, valued once he has a job, once he's contributing positively. Some of us, yes, we mentioned a small percentage who are stable economically, but yet they, they tend to neglect their, their, their duties because they're probably sharing five different households. You know that create a whole new um, set of problems. But that is my that is my approach. We do need to establish strong mentorship program outside of the co religious context, right? Uh -huh. um, no, no, no um, not disrespecting pastor. Religion is is key, but we need alternatives as well. You know, we don't have an Alexa layer. We need to try several approach to solve this problem. Because yeah. um, as I as I said too, how do you teach a man who? How can a man be a father when he never had a father? And I, I'll I, I say this because um, in the case of my own father, he was raised by a single mother. His father was never present in his life. Um, he never really had a fatherly figure, and so he struggled with being a father. Um, so how do you help a man who has never been fathered to be a father? And this this chain and this cycle, it continues where men are just um, contributing to making children and then they they leave them, they abandon them. And so the cycle continues. And so it, it really does go back to the point of having a mentorship program as you pointed out, Mr. Gonzalez, because you know, if the men are not going to take it on, then you know it's 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 unfortunate that other men will have to step up into that role and take on that responsibility to help our young men to not continue this cycle. And as Pastor said, the church and Christ and whatever your religion is, that that's another uh, key factor or the uh, main factor. And and now I want to talk about: Do you think that men feel? As if you know, they're not, they're no longer needed as much as they were back in the day because women are so dominant, women are so independent. I can fall back now as a man. You know, women want to like take on all the roles and responsibilities. We try to get things done quicker. Um, do you think men, you know, just feel as if, well, I don't have to do as much anymore. So why do as much? Why should I um, go out of my way? Do you think that's something that's also contributing to this? You know, the women's movement is very successful. And I think we're seeing today a lot of the, the fruits of their labor. And I support that movement strongly. Um, I remember uh, two years ago, 
I was um, invited to a program um, host by the, the Commonwealth Education or Commonwealth Learning and they wanted to to address the same issue about bringing the boys back into the classroom. In Guyana, the statistics are alarming, dropout rates and so on. And, um, or they, they, I think it was termed defeminizing the classroom. Um, and it speaks volume. From, from a juvenile justice perspective, I can also say that we, the highest um, male, the male, are carrying the highest number of crimes, juvenile crimes committed in Guyana. Murder, petty larceny, robbery, and the likes. Um, the females, you barely find them for wandering, but now the Juvenile Justice Act um, do away with wandering. So very rare you're finding um, girls, the girls being arrested. So it, it from that little snapshot tells us a lot of what's going on, right? So um, yes, back to the strong, strong, strong um, mentoring. And I find apart from pastors, preachers, and so on, that coaches make good mentors. So I'm, I'm really hoping I see maybe coming out of the Ministry of Education or some one of these institutions that they, they, they create those kind of programs and, and put them in the school system, you know, so that once you identified a troubled youth, um, that he can turn around now and offer some advice. And even some of the very same men who neglected their role and reformed, we can use those guys to go out there and, and, and help advocate, you know, help, help foster some type of change with our youths. I'm focusing on the youth because a lot of the men now <laughs> who have abandoned their role, I, I, am, I don't think we we'll reach some of them but we definitely can reach the youths. Um, your, your take on it, uh, Pastor, um, if you feel that women are, are too dominant now and men have decided to fall back. Well, I mean, you can't stop a woman from being dominant, you know, being who she wants to be. That That's all right, you know. Um, go ahead and be all that you want to be, you know, educate yourself. Um, I think what we should understand as men is that our role is to support the woman. You know, if I have a wife, she wants to be a doctor or a lawyer. Um, I have to have that understanding that, listen, OK, I'm supporting you, you know, go for your vision, go whatever you want to achieve. Um, but to answer that question is a yes, I, I think. I think um, women has become so dominant that men has, you know, uh, felt like if they're less needed, you know, they're, they're less needed. But I don't I don't think that should be the approach of men. It should be the understanding that I need to support a female. And, and when they come to that place to understand that you need to support the female, well, then you'll be fine with yourself personally as a man. And that will make you a man when you support other people's dreams and vision, especially your wife, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's an understanding. I'll, I'll put it down to answer your question. It comes down to the understanding of the man that, okay, it's not that the woman's more dominant, but she's more ambitious and support her, you know? Indeed. All right, yes. gentlemen, what we're going to do, we're going to take a quick commercial break and then we're going to come back, of course, and continue the conversation. So stay tuned, everyone. The book launch of Jung Bahadur Singh of Guyana by Dr. Beta M. Ramrak will be held on Saturday, November 23rd at 5 p.m. at Tulsi Mandir. This book dives into the life of Jung Bahadur Singh, a prominent leader and mediator who assisted the sugar workers in their dispute with management. This book would examine the legacy of Jung Bahadur Singh as well as his contentious relationship with Chetty Jagan. Support the book launch on Saturday, November 23rd at 5 p.m. at 10324 111th Street, Richmond Hill, New York. Again, that's Saturday, November 23rd at 5 p.m. at Tulsi Mandir. Clubspan's professional platform is now available for rental. Create your own content, promote your business, and reach hundreds of thousands of viewers in Guyana, United States, Canada, and the United Kingdom. Clubswang gives you the ability to interact with viewers and guests to reach the multitude. Contact sales at globespan247.com 
for more information. Yes, we're back um, and our topic this evening is the role of men in today's society. If you've just joined us, I'm joined here discussing this topic by Apostle Kevin Ferreira of the Changing of Life Ministries Church in Berbis and Mr. Andre Gonzalez, Deputy Director of Juvenile Justice at the Ministry of Public Security. Remember, you can share your thoughts and your comments on the topic on our Facebook page. Do remember to share and to also um, like the page. And so far we discussed, you know, why men are struggling to take on their role in society, um, what are some of the contributing factors. And as we continue the conversation, we also touched a little bit on if men are, they feel as if they're no longer, they're not needed as much as before because the woman, because women have become so independent and almost anything that a man can do, or I should say anything that a man can do where work is related, um, women can also do. <laughs> the two gentlemen are smiling. Um, and so I, I, I want to know now, are men, are, are, I want to touch on this um, as sensitively as possible, but a lot of the men are killing women now. So we have that phenomenon and, um, you know, it's, it's a very prevalent phenomenon in Guyana. And I'd like for us to touch on that and give your thoughts on why are the men killing the women? And it, I mean, I think it's it's linked based on some of the things that you've said um, before we went to the commercial break about not feeling needed, jealousy, but what are your thoughts on, um, on this phenomena of domestic re uh, violence related murders? The man in Guyana, his idea of a strong relationship is to maintain control. Uh -huh. And once that his control is challenged, then uh -huh. he lashes out. He responds with violence. Um, a lot of these guys, a lot of the men in Guyana, um, no longer reason or rationalize Everything is because the, the, the fist tends to speak very loud, mm. you know. So I think um, that is one of the, and, and, and the fist tends to drive women away. And the more it occurred, the further away they go. Eventually, eventually, as, um, as we've seen in, in, we've read the stats, we've seen in the news and so on, they take take lives. Some try to take their own. Some of them just don't care. Yeah. Uh, pass to your thoughts. Well, you know, I'm I'm totally against that. You know, I don't believe a man should, you know, even touch a woman. You know, um, uh, domestic violence is the biggest issue in Guyana, and um, I, I believe men need to respect women. You know. Um, we're all human beings and, um, you know, and there's a lot of a lot of things that contribute towards it, um, you know, maybe drugs, alcohol, but there is no excuse for killing a woman. There, There is no excuse. A man should face maximum penalties for, for killing a woman. Um, I totally disagree with that. And um, men need to understand that they need to respect women, um, you know, Women are so important in society. We come into this world through a woman, you know. Uh, every man, whether it's a woman or a man, is born of a woman, isn't that so? You know, so we should at all times have that respect for women. Um, we, we have a mother, you know, so why is it that we want to hit a, another woman? You understand? We would not like if someone hit our mother. So um, I, I, I pray and I pray that Guyana, uh, we'll come to a place where we'll see an end to this. You know, we we have, we had in 2017 
uh, Pastor Joseph Passat from the Liberty Bible Church um, in, in uh, I think it's an ozone. Um, he came with hope is rising against suicide. I was involved in that, you know, and um, uh, according to statistics, um, he, he also brought Travis Green, the, the famous Gartel artist, and you know, it was a big movement against um, crime, domestic violence, suicide, you know, and um, uh, I only hope that, you know, not only church, but also the government, um, everyone who is concerned, play their role in ensuring that this come to an end, that men stop hitting women and killing women as well. Because we need to see it stop, my friend. Yeah. How do we help the men or the men who are abusers? How do we help them? Because oftentimes, um, you know, focus should be placed on helping women. But then if that woman walks away from that abusive relationship, which, you know, she was abused by a man and she moves on with something else. And yes, her life may become better and she walks away alive. There is still another woman or women who will encounter that man who's damaged. So oftentimes that man is cast aside and he's left to his own device. How do we approach, how do we deal with um, those men abusers to help them? Because it's obvious that they need help. Yeah. I, 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 if I can um, take comment on this, I think um, counseling is m very important. Um, they have several several types of counseling to address particular type of um, of issues that the man might be facing. Um, so I think that's a start. Now, I have a, another friend of mine who started a program called um, Sons of Champions. And it's uh, in the boxing setting, and they would use that 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 platform, that for that medium to to get um, get men, get young men to to start talking, to open up. And I think that approach is very very important. They, they use the boxing bag for them to help vent, get the anger out, and then they have trained some of the coaches are trained counselors. Who, who knows how to guide guide them through um, their fears and, and some of the feeling. Uh, I, I had the opportunity to speak with a, um, a couple, well, quite a few, quite a few of the guys. And most of the time, most of the time, I, I know they want to put on this controlling face, but it's fear. Fear of losing that person. Sometimes it's what they were thought that's what they saw the father did that's what the uncle does you know and that is how that's what it takes you know to 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 to, to maintain and this i'm using their words actually you know to maintain the household to keep my family in line um because i got to go to the interior i want to know things are right back home so um to 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 change that the solution is we should tap into more programs like sons of champions um, develop more strong, head-on, hardcore counseling counseling programs. Um, that that is not—they're not afraid to challenge some of these tough guys and break them down. You know, let them see themselves and what they're doing. That they are actually destroying the thing that they're supposed to be protecting. Yeah. Mm. I, I thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. How do we help our abusers? Yeah. Um, I totally agree with my brother. Um, uh, counseling is is good, you know. Counseling is very, very good. Um, talking to people, coaches, etc. These are all good methods. Um, however, I do believe that um, you know, men ought to men ought to respect women, and um, also is that it comes down to the choices of, of, of men too, you know. Um, they made that choice at that moment and point in time to allow their anger to get the better of them and then they, you know, hit a woman, kill a woman or whatever. Um, I'm coming to the place where um, men need to come to that place and, and talk to himself and say, you know what, this is not right. You know, this is not right. You, you know, we see people go to counseling and still kill people. 
You understand what I'm saying? We see people. We see. We see that. We see they go to. They went. Uh, you would hear of story where they they took counseling, both of them, husband and wife, or boyfriend and girlfriend. We see that, and it still happens. So counseling is good. I'm not against that, and I think everyone should get counseling. But I, I, I do believe. I do believe it come back to the place where people need to understand that they need God in their life. They need God in life because um, also to kill someone. It, it it goes to the next level of anger. It has to be rage. The next level of anger is rage. And I believe the, the devil now operates in the realm of rage. And there's where we find a murder take place, you know. So uh, those abusers, yeah, a number of ways how they could get help. There is the institution like my, my friend just mentioned. There is the church as well. Um, there is help out there for them. It's not like all is lost, but at the end of the day, my friend, men need to make decisions um, for themselves as well to respect women. Um, because you know, we, we keep we keep having this concept like if they are a victim too, you know, uh, and and uh, the question is, what do we do to help the abusers? But um, there's a lot of things to help them. You know, um, like my friend just now mentioned, the organization they have, there is a church. But my thing is, um, men need to say to themselves that, listen, this is not right as well to make a good choice, you know. Definitely. Um, why do you think men are so afraid to be vulnerable? to show their emotion? Because it's not something the alpha male does. It's not macho, it's weak. Yeah. To, to show yeah. vulnerability, it's weak. You know, yeah. um, these guys want to put up a front, especially in Guyana, that, you know, yeah. I am the man, you know? So with that, you know, we'll bring, we'll bring um, additional problems. Yeah. Yeah. What, what, what makes you a man is to humble yourself. You know, I believe a man is not measured by success. A man is measured how he deals with situations in life. Exactly. That's, that's how you're measured. You're not measured by how much money you have or what, what car you have. You're measured by how you handle situation with your children, with your wife. That's how you're measured. You know, you're measured by the quality of decision that you make. You understand? And, um, you know, may, may this program help some people tonight, you know, that help some men, especially tonight as we reach out to, you know, Facebook, whatever this program is going on, to uh, understand that we need to respect uh, women. Uh, how, how can we help men to really tap into their emotional side? And do you think this would solve some of the problems like the killings and, you know, men walking away from their children, from their home? How, how can we help men to tap into their emotions? I think, again, it will, it will have to start with um, the man accepting that he has a problem. He has an anger problem. That's it. And then checking himself into mm -hmm. a program that will that will will deal will will address his particular needs, right? Mm -hmm. Whether whether it's a, a, a anger that was pinned up from childhood, he's seen his mom getting um, abused by his dad and the cycle to break it. Then you have the other the other side where, I, 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 and I'm going to go Guyanese on you here, right? <laughs> the the, the yeah. rum shop counselors, you know, that gas these guys up. Bad and, you go home and tear off on everybody in the family. So you have to have another program that specifically address that that individual um, needs. And and that, so so it comes all the way back to. And I think the Alcoholics Anonymous got a good um, approach. You know, you, you first have to admit that there is a problem. There you go. And then we should the government along with civil society, the religious community, the CBOs, and so on they that is that is the time when they can step up and says well we have a we have the solution for you we have the programs that can help you yeah yeah tracy the greatest the greatest examination you can do is not the one at the university or the one at cxc the greatest examination you could do is to examine yourself on a daily basis 
if you can do self-examination of you know where am i going wrong or what i need to improve on am i treating people right you 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 do some self you analyze your personal life you examine yourself do some self examination and if you can do that uh, you'll be a better person you know you'll be a better person you will you will learn of your strength and your weaknesses and 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 and, and, and try to improve on your weaknesses and build on your strength and you'll find you treat people better very true. So with everything that we've discussed and all of these, um, you know, you gentlemen have been really, really honest and open about this um, uh, and you've shared, where do we go from here to help our men? And for everyone who's listening, we all have a role to play to help our men and our young boys, especially when we see that they, they don't have that strong um, fatherly figure in their life and you know you can already say that this child is going to perpetuate the cycle um that you know he is grow he's growing up with and so he's going to be a problem in society so where do we go from here to deal with this problem as individuals as a country i would ask the religious community um and, and all the communities in Guyana to, to start up, to establish some kind of, um, some kind of watch group within each community. And let the community leaders be the point person to address or to approach the household within that community that may be problematic, that, that issues may be occurring in. Um, with a strong with a strong support system uh, and i'm saying this for example you may have um and i'm going to use all boys tongue for instance next door the man beating everybody when he get high and whatever he's doing next door to him you got the old lady who is calling the police for help to help the family but the other members of the community turning a blind eye they don't want to see they pretend they ain't hearing what's going on so yeah. that little old lady i'm saying should have a support system that she can go out there now and really address the the the, 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 the abuser knowing that e pluris no out of one day are many of us standing here willing to say you are a good man you are god's creature you have a fan a beautiful and a handsome family let us help you. Let us help you address the issues. Mm. I think that's the that is that that is one one approach. Um, okay. But I'm I'm really willing want to hear what what past that. But um, the approach he has to say, it's, it's yeah, that, that's it's, that's a good approach, my brother. That that's really good. But like you uh, profoundly say, that's one right. So I yeah. I think you know that there are many more, right? There are many How more. Yeah, I, however, what I would like to put my finger on is that um, we need to target uh, in our country, um, we, we need to target the, the generation coming up, those young men who are between age 16, we need to target them that they don't fall into the trap of their forefathers, you know, and uh, um, the church, the churches, um, all, all who have the concern of, at heart, um, need to come together, pull together, and edify our young men. Um, you know, go into schools. We 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 use as a church our freedom program to go into schools to educate young men. You know, from a very early age. So it's good if we could target the 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 young people coming up, um, especially our teenager. So when they uh, reach that age to to, to get married and so on, that we're not going to have these killings and domestic violence. So we need to educate them now. So later on, we can have a better Guyana. All right, we so what we're going to do, we're going to take a commercial break. And when we come back, we're going to wrap up. And I just would like to hear from both of you your hope for our men today. So we'll be right back. Sure. Support Globespan 24-7 initiatives by sponsoring our programs. Our goal is to bring all sides to the table, and with your help, this can become possible. With your support, we can shape a greater nation together. 
Contact sales at globespan247.com for more information or inbox us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn. So we're back and um, today we celebrate our men. Uh, it's International Men's Day and I'd like to thank these two gentlemen for taking time off to join me this evening on Globespan 24-7. Uh, for us to discuss these issues and to everyone who um, are online viewers and to Mr. Suresh Sogrim. Um, he's been sharing so much. We thank you for your contribution, Diane Madri, and all of our other online uh, guests. And as we wrap up the program, what is your hope, Mr. Gonzalez, for our men? Can you repeat that? I think something happened. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, great. I'd like to know what what is what are you, what is your hope for our men um, as we wrap the program up? What do you hope for the most for our men? Okay, so one of the things I really hope um, for the men in Guyana is that after this election, jobs mm -hmm. are created. <laughs> um, that will truly give our, 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 our young men, our youths, a chance, uh, um, a reason to, to, to really be productive, productive citizens. So I'm hoping that we, 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 in, we develop or we create the opportunity for, for our, our young men. Um, I'm hoping that, I'm praying actually, that mm -hmm. our young men don't Amen. rush into situations. Um, relationships. That's something I also observe in Guyana. Um, and you could check the stats too. The marriage, um, married by by the age 30 is, is one of the highest in the Caribbean. And then also you look at the divorce rate by age 35. It's even higher. So um, I said that to say um, I, I would like to see our young men focus more on education, try to catch up with the girls, they're really outdoing us. Um, step up to the plate. If along the way you um, you 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 have a child, you, uh, you have a young family, um, get in there. Be a good father. You have support systems out there. What what I want to see as well is that these support systems make themselves known. You know, for for some of these guys, that that they can they can access easy access to these systems. So and and I think with, with with that with that right combination, I think we're going to not solve the problem in its totality because you will always have ten percent, ten percent that you just can't reach. And I hope that my police officers and the the institutions in Guyana act swiftly. Uh -huh. That that is uh, my hope. Thank you. I'll pass to your hope for our men. Well, I'm with my my friend here. Um, he said he's praying and hoping. So I'm doing the same. I'm praying and hoping. And I'm also positive that the generation coming up is going to be greater, is going to be better. Yeah. We see we do see that um, the, the younger generation coming up is taking education more seriously. Now we see a lot of teachers graduating. We see of the a uh, few days ago, uh, a lot of people graduating from UG and Swan, which is really nice to see, you know, and UG had their graduation. A lot of people graduated. So more people are going to the university. Uh, more people want to be in the teaching profession. Um, this this is good. This is good. What is needed if, like my brother said, after the election, we have more jobs that will make people more interesting, that they want to do more things with their life. But I, I believe that we're going to have a good Guyana. I believe the best is yet to come for Guyana. I believe that our generation coming up is going to be greater than the, the one gone, but the ones gone by. And uh, I'm positive. I'm really positive that um, things are going to get better, and our young man coming up is going to be greater than the, the generation before. Excellent. Thank you all so so very much um, for sharing your thoughts again for taking the time out to um, be on this program with us and well, I'd like to say happy uh, Men's Day to all of the men who are viewing this program and to all of the men across 
the world and a big thank you to Globespan 24-7 for giving us this platform that we can um, share and educate and inform all of our viewers. So again, a big thank you all and um, do remember to continue to support Globespan. Gentlemen, again, thank you. It was a pleasure. Thank, thank you for please. having us. Amen. It, all right, everyone. Do enjoy the rest of your evening. Good night. God bless.